Alright. If I start screaming like a injured fox, come get me. Yes. Oh, this is gonna f so good. Hey, how you doing? My name's Taylor. I'm sorry for the evening intrusion. Um, sorry. I've been helping your neighbors uh, euthanize some of the deer. We, okay. had, we had one come across your driveway, so... Yeah, so right now we're right outside of Georgetown. Uh, this is like downtown DC waterfront, and then Georgetown University is right up on the hill here. So we're currently on the, D the Virginia side of DC, cruising on 66 in the DMV home of uh, 2.8 million of my closest friends and not as many whitetail. That happens to me all the time. Constantly I'll be speaking to other uh, hunting figures in the industry who scoff and laugh at the idea of hunting behind houses or hunting on small little tracks of ground and small little draws. It's the coolest thing in the world. To be able to figure out where the deer are coming through pinch points and have the numbers of deer that we get to see and to be able to help manage a herd and also be able to just see deer when you go out constantly. hunted from people's decks before. Lots of tree forts and swing sets, anything, uh, anything that the deer are used to, to where uh, it's not an abnormal uh, area in the woods that draws attention. And for me, the only thing I'm looking for is an elevated position to where I'm shooting down and not uh, potentially shooting an arrow at, at ground level. The big difference between suburban hunting and hunting out uh, on a farm somewhere um, are the, the size of the properties. Um, you've got you know, one acre, two acre, three acre properties here. If you want to hunt 100 acres in a suburban area, you might have to have 300 permissions from each one of those. And if they're posted, you have to have written permission. 300 pieces of paper that you have to carry around to hunt 100 acre you know, area or so. Taylor's already laid the groundwork for urban hunting. Uh, a lot of people can, can learn from him uh, just on how to manage clients, uh, because that's the biggest thing. If, if you have a farm, you have to manage one landowner. If you're hunting in suburbia, you might have to manage 100 different landowners. So how do you do that? Well, he's, he's been doing that for the past 10 years and he's figured it out. So I'm fortunate, I get to hunt about 150 days a year. On a good year, I'll shoot around 100 deer a year. Uh, off year, I'll shoot, you know, 40 to 60. So it's a full year-round season that we're able to get in here and harvest antlerless deer, uh, antler deer sprinkled in there for a pretty good amount of time as well. It's 95, 100 degrees. Uh, he's he's there when it's you know five degrees outside, so he's hunting year round, man. It's a lot. He just has opportunities that that a lot of other people don't have because he's put so much time into um, scouting. He's put so much time into finding properties. He's put so much time into client relations, and he's put the effort in, and that's what gives him you know the opportunities that he has to to shoot so many deer. Well, 12 or 13 deer at a time, huh? Wow. 
Wow. Okay. Yes, ma'am. I'll I'll tell you what. I'll be out there tomorrow morning. White-tailed deer are overabundant in Northern Virginia, largely because of the lack of hunting pressure that they've experienced. Some of the properties that are managed have had uh, estimates through spotlight surveys or through camera surveys. Um, the property that we're on now at one time had over 250 deer on this 700 acres, which is approximately a square mile. At Manassas Battlefield, the estimates have been as high as 412 deer per square mile. The deer are unmolested in, in, in some of these areas for 10, 15 years and they never have a hunter. Um, cars are their only real predators around, around these parts. Additionally, as we put in suburbia, we're actually creating deer habitat. Many people think that deer belong in the deep dark woods of Shenandoah National Park, and it's just not the case. Deer use edge habitat. They need to have a diversity of habitats with openings and with cover. And in suburbia, we create that habitat. I'm a landscaper, so uh, when some people come in to, they move into these areas and they wanna, they wanna spruce up their yard and they wanna put you know, tens of thousands, sometimes hundreds of thousands of dollars into their landscaping to have the deer destroy it. Um, that's proof of the overabundance of deer and, then, and the need for deer management in these areas. You're not what I expected. And you go, well, what do you mean by that? They go, well, we just expected some guy in army fatigues to get out and just come be all about killing. And they don't expect, you know, some guy who can pretend to be articulate and, uh, you know, stumble around with a golden tongue and, and just be able to, um, you know, talk to the homeowners, understand their needs and, and be able to, you know, carry on a conversation. And I think it's really refreshing to them because they've set the bar so low with an expectation that they're really pleasantly surprised uh, when this hunk of man gets out of the car. And we'll say that again so you can actually use it. They're so used to human interference that it's just as part of their daily life. I have a lot of the people, you know, where I hunt on their property, and they tell me, oh, well, we won't let the dog out, or we won't do anything when you're here. It, don't, it doesn't matter. You know, the deer are so used to your normal routine, you can't, you cannot mess them up. But he, he shot a couple just in what, 24 hours or so, just in the past uh, day. So he, he takes a lot of deer and donates the hunters for the hungry because he can't eat all of them. <laughs> so my wife and I, along with my uh, trip of brothers and family, we'll eat anywhere between three to five deer a year. Out of all the other ones that I harvest, I donate a majority of them to a program called Hunters for the Hungry, which is one of my favorite parts of hunting in this area is being able to donate deer that I'm not going to use to a place for free of charge for me that takes the meat and gives it to families in need and homeless shelters uh, and provides food for them free of charge as well. When you're hunting on small tracts of land, sometimes 
the deer will not expire on a property that you have permission to be on. When that happens, and, and you know, when a deer leaves the property, I always go back to my car, I put on regular clothing, and leave the property I have permission on and go to that person's house to ask for permission. There have been a few times that Taylor's been in the woods and he's had to knock on doors for permission to track and retrieve a deer. And he always ends up coming back with permission to hunt that property or somewhere close to it. Walking up that driveway, I get butterflies in my stomach that are just like the butterflies when there's a deer under you because you just do not know how it's going to go. And some people have very different opinions on, on Whitetail Hunter. I realized that it crossed your property and I didn't want to trespass anywhere without oh, permission. Okay. So uh, if it's okay fine. with you, if I can grab yeah, 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 yeah. it. So. So no problem. Okay, perfect. Yeah, no so you have no problem with me hunting here, or just just uh, you know taking out the guys. Oh yeah, the perfect. Yeah. So no problem at all. So when do you do? When, do, when will you do it? Tomorrow morning, or you just? Oh well, I just come. You just, you know, as if, when, uh, yeah, what I can do is I can give you my cell phone number, and as you start seeing droves of them, just shoot me a text, and uh, yeah, they're always around. Yeah, they're they're rampant. the absolute greatest thing in the world, to be able to hunt this many properties, this close to home, and this close to, in my opinion, the coolest city in the world, it doesn't get better than that. I think it's interesting that regardless of where you live physically, you're always gonna find a way to do what you're truly passionate about. That's what gets you out of bed 150 times a year at 4.30 or 5 o'clock in the morning. My name is Taylor Chamberlain, and I bow hunt whitetails in the suburbs of Washington, D.C. It is, a, it is the most fun you can have with your pants on.